Hey Key Seekers, I'm Nick. And I'm Starthy. And today, what are we doing, Starthy? We are unboxing and installing the new Corsair H115i Pro RGB. See them RGBs? All of the That's RGBs. That's what we're all about. And uh, this is also a guide to show you how to install an all-in-one water cooler as well. Because, uh, to be honest, the procedure's pretty much the same for all of them. So come along for the ride with us as we show you how. Anyway, enough of all of that. Uh, let's talk about the things that you should do for every single one of our videos. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now. What else do they need to do? They need to hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. Yeah. yeah so they know when we're in your feed balls. Well, when we're in your box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not using a teleprompter today. We're doing it freestyle. Ad lib. Add to the lid. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, enough of all that talking. Let's roll that intro and get right into it. Yep. When should we do it? Now? Now. Okay, roll the intro. Now. Ooh. Okay, so right. we are going to take this knife and slowly... Cut all of the things, right? Yeah, just give it a good jab. Only one jab. I mean, too many jabs and it gets a bit naughty. Yeah, a bit naughty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I like the packaging. They've added like this RGB thing they've, along the front. They've added RGB with that. <laughs> yeah, they've actually they've added printed R RGB. <laughs> they've actually out. printed RGB. What so, do you think about the new design for the actual like the, the CPU block? To be honest, I've got the one where it comes out of the pump itself. Yeah. And I don't think it's that all that great because it feels like it's easy to break. Yeah. And I'm not a fan of the one that I've currently got. Now I think you open it up knowing Corsair. From the side. And then it's going to hit the camera because it's... Review. Okay, you can not get it. So the H115i Pro actually comes with two... ML series fans, which are, they pump more air, but they make less noise, which is beneficial. And I like these, I've actually got them in my computer. Do you know what I would have liked to have seen with this new water cooling kit? RGB kit? lights. RGB, the fans. LL fans. Yep. LL, LL fans, fans. Would have been really So nice. we get two of them because it is a 280 mil radiator and they're two 140 mil fans. Just, we don't have to open the other one. Um, and in here is pretty much, oh the radiator and pump itself. That's a big boy. That is a very big boy. Now, yeah. Nick and I were actually debating whether it's going to fit in my case or not. Uh, yeah, because what's the case we're using today? Today we're doing it on the... Fractal Design Meshify C. Mm. Yeah, it says online that it can take a 280mm radiator at the front, but... Let's I see have... if they're lying or not. Yeah, <laughs> I, have, I have my doubts. Now, one thing I'm excited about is... I'm just going to take plastic off here. The new pump is both SATA powered as well as... No, that's it. Is it? It is SATA powered. Yep. Oh, they'd have a USB header on it as well. Um, yeah, there is a USB header. Now, it will be compatible with my existing yeah, link software and cable and whatnot, so it's I don't have to go around easier. doing that. It's mm -hmm. going to make it a lot easier, but we'll just put this to the side. And we also have all the mounting gear and the USB cables and whatnot. And to be honest, I don't think I'm going to be using any of this stuff because I've already got most of it installed in my rig at the moment. I'm just doing a straight swap of the radiator. But we'll talk but about. We will talk about and show you how to install all that stuff anyway because it is a how-to video. Yeah. Um, and underneath this smelly egg crate, because it <laughs> really, really stinks, is all the manuals and your warranty guide. And I don't know why they give you a guide for your warranty, like. How to fill Whatever. out a bit of paper. Use yeah. a pen. There's, Make sure it has ink in it. <laughs> there's your there's your manual on how do you install and all your bits that you should have included. But here. we're gonna show you all that anyway. But yeah, yeah, we're gonna do all that. So happy days. As we know, the Corsair H115i Pro into my machine, but you're probably thinking, but he's already got a water cooler in his all or an AIO in his machine and that is because I own probably Intel's hottest CPU ever made like and known to man. Um, I've got an i7 7700K sitting under that dodgy pump right there and yes dodgy we'll get into that. Um, 7700K is one of Intel's good i7s but it is just very hot like extremely hot. 
I get idle temps of about 55 degrees, which is not normal for a water cooler like this. And in-game menus, I'm saying menus, like you're not doing anything but sitting in a game menu. I will hit 95 degrees on my CPU. That is not healthy. Um, I've also got a problem where I'm having like ambient coolant temperatures of above 40 degrees, which is not the greatest thing ever. So I think I've actually killed my pump um, and that's from bad usage and from also switching it to different modes constantly. That can burn out the pump and then effectively kill your AIO, which is what I think I've done. Um, but we will find out after I've done the install. Some of the things you're going to need to do the installation of an AIO or any cooler for that fact are good old handy bottle of rubbing alcohol. Now for that rubbing alcohol you're also going to need a paper towel because you need to get your sticky stuff off your CPU. <laughs> you're going to need obviously your AIO. Now today we're using the pre-installed thermal compound that is on the end of the pump itself and it's actually a decent thermal compound. Of course, they've done a good job. Like, we've done previous builds with new AIOs and it's held up. It's, we've got some good things out of it. Um, you're gonna need any and or brackets depending what, uh, what model CPU you have. So today, because we're working on the seventh gen i7, we're gonna need one of these brackets. Not these ones, because it's for AM4, I'm guessing. Um, also, if you're doing this setup on an enthusiast level CPU, so like your X299 and your X399, you do not need any brackets whatsoever. That is because Corsair kindly provides you with standoffs that you just screw into the retention system and Bob's your uncle. Like, you don't have to do anything. It's really, really good what Corsair have done. And obviously, your retention screws to screw this on and make it all tight and nice. Because um, it's Corsair and we're going to be using the Link software, you're going to be, using, you're going to be needing to use their um, USB cable, which plugs into one of your headers down the bottom. Um, we've just noticed that I'm going to have to change my USB cable, so I'm a bit annoyed because they're not the same across the board, but that's all good. Don't mind playing with my computer a bit more. And obviously fans, you're gonna need your fans so you can install them onto your radiator for max cooling. I don't even know what, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm feeling for at this point. It's what she said. Alrighty, so that we're just gonna hang out here because... You reckon that's gonna be okay? Yeah, it's gonna be fine. Right, that's gonna be fine. Right, if, if you're happy to let your 1080 hang on the, on the ground like that. It's not hanging on the ground, it's on the Sorry, table. sorry, my bad, 1080 Ti. 1080 Ti. <laughs> now, because this is a fractal design mesh of IC, you're gonna have to remove your bottom filter um, because it gets in the way of you actually removing your front panel. I'll just put that to the side. Ooh, front panel time. This is and good stuff. Man. This is where it gets hard because this front panel is a pain to get off. They're, ooh, that's dusty. Maybe we should clean that. Maybe we should clean that. Cut, no jokes. <laughs> Um, this front panel actually doesn't come off. Depending on your CPU and what you've got in your computer, depends on what bracket you'll be installing on the back of your motherboard. Now, can't see the back of my motherboard just yet, but we'll show you that in a second. Now, for all Intel CPUs and motherboards, you'll be using this bracket here. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, the, the 115X. Yes, the 115X. Um, that's for all your Intel CPUs. This, on the other hand, is for anything AMD. So, your AM3s, your AM4s. Now, in saying that, your standoffs will also be um, dependent on what kind of CPU you have. Shorter standoffs are for your enthusiast CPUs for Intel and your long standoffs shown here are for your general consumer CPU so your i core i5 or your core i lineup as we'll call them and these weird clip ones are for your AMD CPU so we don't need these today we will be using the long standoffs. Now you can tell there's a difference between the standoffs because A, the hex in the middle is longer and also the, the thread length is longer for your screws. So that's how you can tell which standoff you'll be needing to use. You're gonna get this bracket and you wanna literally line the standoffs with the holes. And these um, little standoff things move about. So if you, you know, 
So they come out here, 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 and I think there. I can't really see it because the ram sticks are in the way. <laughs> but um, next, what you're going to want to do is install your standoffs into those four holes. So using our trusty screwdriver. It's, I, it's a method that we own patent pending. No order required. As long as the clamping pressure's there, your CPU won't explode. Correct. <laughs> Worst case scenario. And that is your mounting bracket on. What we're gonna do is we'll be mounting the radiator into the case itself, but first we're gonna install the fans. Now, the internet has fought over this time and time again on how you should mount your fans with a radiator and whatnot, and I personally like to mount them on the inside of the radiator so that they are sucking air through the radiator, radiator as opposed to pushing air through. Now, I do it this way in this case because it's easy to mount the radiator to the case, but I think Bitwit did a, um, he did a test online or maybe it was even Jay's two cents as to which way, you know, actually really matters and he found out that it doesn't matter at all. To be honest, like for my own personal experience on Ryzen CPUs yeah. from performance testing, mounting it on the inside with the fans the way that we're doing it here actually performed a lot better. Yeah, and like, I think they did that test a little while ago on some Intel stuff, but from experience with the Ryzen stuff, the way that you're doing it now is the correct way. But regardless, you're still gonna get air over your fins, you're still gonna get hot air into your case. Same, same. Yeah. Like, well, well, it doesn't matter which way you do it. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Let's, yeah. let's be honest. It's just for the purpose of ease of installation, this is the easiest way to install it into my computer. So that's how I'm gonna do it. Now also, don't forget to mount your fans the right way. Generally, that means the air, the direction of airflow is going to be through the bracket, like going that way. So that's what you want. and it just drops on. Line up the four screws and you'll be all right. So we've just placed the pump onto the standoffs and I've applied them on, like applied the screws and you want to use the cross method and you only want to do it finger tight for now because star method, like you don't want, you want, you want even pressure across the whole CPU because that's the best, you know, thermally for your, you know, Best for your thermal dissipation. Clam clamping pressure is very important because if there isn't enough pressure, it's not actually going to be able to pull the heat off the CPU and effectively cool it. Correct. So. Um, and we also like to just use a screwdriver just to give it a final tighten and this one seems to give just enough tightness. And the trick is with the small screwdrivers as well because uh, it, it's weird, it's kind of hacky, but because the head is actually physically so small, you can't tighten it that much without it slipping. So it's kind of like using a torque wrench at the same time. Yep. Now I've already run my new um, USB header cable for Corsair Link and I've run it through my top cavity here and I'm just going to hide the cable under my VRM heat sink which ultimately, you know, people say, oh, that's going to melt your, your cable. It doesn't do anything of the sort. Your VRMs don't get that hot. Because they can't nearly get hot enough to do that. No, they damage. can't. Like, and it's insulated cable as well. Yeah. Um, so that's running in there. Now you've also got on the end of this two fan header cables. They are PWM and they plug into your fans um, for the sake of me needing to do my cable management. That's going to happen later. Uh, we probably won't show you that, but you get it. It's simple as plug it in and done. But yeah. <laughs> um, we also have a SATA power cable for your pump, which is absolutely amazing because the old ones ran off USB power, which I don't really like because say something goes wrong with that USB header, 
you've got no more power to your pump. See, I'm of a different opinion. This is why Starthy and I do stuff well together. I actually like the USB power only, especially if I'm um, installing a water cooler in a rack server. Yep, that's a thing that we do. And yeah, I get to save some starter power for something else, but mm -hmm. okay. I mean, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> now, also one thing you've got here is your pump header now, or oh, oh, it's your pump cable. And this, Depending on your motherboard actually, you may have a dedicated pump header for your pump and I do so I'm going to be using that and you also have to adjust some settings in your BIOS so that you ignore the CPU fan and you don't get warnings and you actually boot into Windows. We hope you enjoyed that little bit of a guide on how to install an all-in-one water cooler. What do the people need to do now that they've watched the video, Starthy? They need to give us 10 likes because we are worth 10 likes because everyone likes the things that we do. Let's shoot and, for 10. Yep, yeah, shoot for 10 likes. And also, don't forget to hit subscribe. Make sure you do it, otherwise he's going to get very mad. Do it. And also, yeah, you guys have met Sathi before. He's done a couple of videos on the channel as well. Go and check them out. They'll be everywhere through the video. Also, all of the parts mentioned in this video, uh, you can buy them via our field links. So make sure you do that as well if you want to purchase anything because it helps the channel. Anyway, that's all from us. Yeah, I'm Nick with Gear Seekers. And I'm Sathi. And uh, you peak, we seek. Yeah, you're the, you're the Senate, right? Go to Dagobah? Don't you? Yeah. Go to Mustafa, actually. Let's go to Mustafa. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. R2, stay with the ship.